Yo, BJ Gador with Men's Health. Happy Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen. So, real quick thing, we got an exciting thing for you this Friday during our weekly Facebook Live workout at noon Eastern every Friday. If you can't make it live, it replays immediately when we're done. Take a look right here. I wrote it up, so we gotta come in. Come on in, Paige, I don't smell that bad. Live mobility workout with K Star, Dr. Kelly Sturet, this Friday, noon Eastern. He's the author of this book, Becoming a Supple Leopard, New York Times bestseller. Uh, the leading mind in mobility. And mobility, and I'll touch on this coming through this workout, what Netflix and stretch means. Mobility is what most guys are really missing. Ladies too, but guys in particular, because we go, we're really muscle focused and performance focused. We don't realize that if we can get more range of motion, if we can do it with less pain, if we can train harder for longer, recover faster, we're gonna get more gains anyway. So this guy is gonna be a great resource for us. He's gonna take me through a 20 to 30 minute mobility workout you can follow along to. Today, just kind of set the tone, um, and you can check out his book on Amazon. I'm not affiliated with the book, I believe in it. I bought it a couple of years ago, and it completely changed the way I look at training, the way I treat my body, really with the mindset of, I want to find a way to train, move with purpose and passion until the day I die. Whenever that is, some of you might wish that day is sooner than later, okay? I'm gonna to try to be here for a long time. I'm not going anywhere, so get used to it. Um, it's an amazing book, it's changed my life. I think it's one of the top five fitness books I've ever read. Truly believe that, and you'll learn more about him later. So Netflix and Stretch. This is kind of a term I've coined because I love television. I love movies. When I'm not working out or eating or sleeping, I'm probably watching some Netflix. Uh, right now we're starting all the way over with Sopranos and going through that. I just finished uh, Bloodline Season 2. Um, big fan of Breaking Bad. Post in the comments your favorite TV series. Uh, maybe favorite movies. I'm obviously a big fan of the Rocky franchise, Shawshank Redemption. Favorite movies, favorite TV series, I just want to know. Share with me any ones that you're working on right now that I should check out. Uh, what does Netflix and Stretch mean? Okay, Netflix and Chill, very popular, okay? But also dangerous, especially if you don't uh, do your due diligence with the person you're engaging in those activities with. So, Netflix and Stretch means you're watching TV, why not find a way to improve your body as well? The TV and the show actually serves as a nice mental distraction to help you accumulate more time in the stretches. The concept is you pick a stretch, perform for two to five minutes or in commercial breaks just while watching your shows or do a series of movements while you're watching. All of these can be done. I'll be using a, a bench, a box, but they can be done off of a couch, chair, ottoman. Uh, you want to have a couple pads access, uh, accessible. I got an ab mat or an Airx pad, but I'll use pillows or sofa cushions at home. And if you have like a small phone book, because we're not looking at them anymore for numbers. If you have it, you can use it as an elevated set for some ankle mobility stuff, a band or a towel, but most of the stuff is pretty equipment free. And I'm gonna take you through my 10 favorite Netflix and stretch drills. You can do any combination of these and the Netflix and stretch concept is this. What can I do right now to help me recover from what I've done the last 24 hours and also to help me prepare for the next 24 hours? Because if we look at trying to mobilize our entire body at all times, we kind of get overwhelmed, we don't do anything. So pick one or two things to help you from what you've just in the last 24 hours. You did a lot of squatting the last 25, within the last 24 hours. Let's focus on a mobility movement that can help you recover in that position. If you're doing pull-ups tomorrow, let's focus on also something that gets you ready for that, okay? So first one, couch stretch. Coined by Dr. Kelly Sturette. All we're gonna do here, and it's called the couch stretch because you can sandwich yourself in the back of a couch and elevate that foot there. And all this is, this is the bottom of a lunge shape or a Bulgarian split squat shape. And this is like, the, this is such an important move for guys. What are we doing here? We're opening up the quads, the hip flexors, which get really tight for a lot of squatting, lunging, and sitting. If you suffer from anterior or front knee pain, this stretch is money. And what you want to focus on doing, right, is not hyperextending the back. And we're getting the motion of the spine, not through the hip like we wanted to. So you got to crunch the abs down, bring the rib shoulders down, abs tight. Think about balancing a glass of water on your head. And I'm gonna spend two to five minutes in this position. I can add some rotation at the upper back. I can do a little bit of a side bend. You get a little more oblique hip flexor tie-in. I can do some overhead reaches. I can keep in that crunch in the abdomen. Add some kind of in and out movement. If it's really challenging for you, you can just kind of come away a little bit further from it and set up a stretch. But ideally, get back as far as you can to squeeze that Glutes really distracts the hip flexor two to five minutes each side. It helps a ton. And I even, uh, during the day, this is a quick bonus tip, when I'm at the desk, because one of the worst things you can do is just spend a lot of time seated, 
I'll have my desk set up. I have a uh, pad for it. If your boss says something, have them call me, okay? Because this is about your health. We're trying to get those workers' competition claims down, right? If you're getting back pain, you feel bad, it's not going to help you out. And I'll just spend time going between a split kneeling position and just switching sides every couple minutes. I won't spend the whole day in this position, but you've been sitting for 15 to 20 minutes or more. you got to break up that pattern. Otherwise, your glutes are going to turn off, your hip flexors are going to really get tight. And uh, this is just a beautiful position to help maintain better core mechanics, keep your glutes turned on, good posture, and, and you actually feel pretty comfortable in this position. So the next one is the elevated hamstring stretch. So it's one of the reasons why the kettlebell swing is such a tough movement for a lot of guys, or they can't bend down and touch their toes without rounding the spine. You should be able to, with minimal rounding of that spine, touch the ground. That's, that's a goal. If you can't do it, you're not alone. I've been there. Um, elevated hamstring stretch. High tabletop kitchen counter. Uh, your significant other will love this. I and mean, you put up your dirty, old, stanky foot on the kitchen counter. I do it all the time. All right? And all we're doing here is getting some good leverage. I actually allows me also to get my trail leg hip into full hip extension. A good stretch there. And all I'm going to do is keep this leg as straight as I can, minimizing bending at the spine. I'm just going to move in and out and get all three compartments of the hamstring. Inner middle, outer, and this helps alleviate a lot of lower back pain, two to five minutes each side. You want to get a little more of that hamstring attachment into the calf, try working on pulling that toe back. You might feel what's called neurotension, a little bit of burning or tingling behind that. That dissipates when you do this stretch on a daily basis for a couple weeks. And if you're feeling that, that means you really are wound up tight. You got to loosen that up and just spend some time, try to uh, do some contract, relax, where I would squeeze the quad as hard as I can and then kind of relax into the stretch. I can also contract relax by pushing my foot down hard into the box to engage my hamstring for about five seconds and relax and kind of let my body sink into the stretch and enhance the stretch. Next one, also great for back pain, the elevated pigeon. And if you're a larger guy or you have really tight hips, the elevated option is probably the only way to get into this successfully. All we're gonna do is take that, and by the way, I'm wearing jeans and this is like my casual Page of pages. This is about as dressed up as you see me. Yeah. Right. And People are calling you out on the monochromatic outfit. Blue shirt, blue jeans, blue shoes. Coordinated. <laughs> I thought this was like a beautiful coordinated outfit. This is like. I think uh, it looks good. Well, it's two of my three casual outfits. <laughs> Usually, it's a tank top and shorts, um, or Daisy Dukes. People miss them. Name. They're blowing up the comments about the shorts, but I, I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah. Miss the Daisy Dukes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll bring them back. Okay. If you want the Daisy Dukes, let me know. I'm not going to do it every time. I got to, I got to keep it, keep you guys honest. So you can do these stretches in jeans, uh, work wear, uh, casual wear, uh, and finding ways to sneak in time. And all we're going to do is we're trying to get that leg bent at about 90 degrees. If you're feeling some tension in the knee, you can kind of back off and get that knee a little further in front of the foot, still getting the benefits of the stretch, but not as much tension in the knee if you're really tight. But this is our 90 degrees is our kind of main goal here. And again, accumulating two to five minutes in this position, moving from more to the knee side, and I can even add a little rotation at the upper back, and this feels so good. It completely unwinds your hip rotators, improves external rotation, which is really important for deeper, better squatting. I can go to my foot side. I can kind of floss in and out of this position. You spend two to five minutes in this regularly, and you have a history of tight glutes and or back pain, I'll tell you what, uh, it'll really improve performance and just how you feel overall. From there, uh, we're watching TV, take a seat. What can I do seated, all right? Two of my favorite drills, and again, one of the, the two uh, most common probably causes of injuries for most people that are preventable are a lack of rotation in the hips and a lack of rotation in the shoulders. So for the hip side of it, just spending time in this kind of cross-legged position here, so we're gonna actually improve external hip rotation, more glute stretch, unload the lower back a little bit, and I can actually take my right elbow and pin down my top leg to help enhance the stretch. And I would just spend time in this position. Again, your body adapts to the shapes you take and use most often. Kelly will talk about this on Friday, and I can work on, again, that lateral side bend, tie in the oblique, all the way into that kind of pelvic floor, really stretch this out and uh, just spending time in this position, all these shapes, takes about two minutes from what the research will point to in terms of allowing enough time to create a change, okay? So two minutes is kind of minimum dose that a lot of physical therapists will prescribe. I can also do what's called the shin box, which allows me to improve both internal 
in external rotation. So the goal here, if you're really tight and have really poor internal rotation in your hip, it probably means when you squat, you round your spine, you kind of dump a lot of torque and can really get in bad positions. So if you like feel like you have to come all the way back here because it's so tight, it means you have to work on internal rotation, which we'll work on that trail leg. So what you'll want to do is just spend time here. And I'll even kind of floss my hip in and out. I can add a little rotation at the upper back. A great way to kind of release tension there. Move in and out to this side. And just get accumulating time in this position really help unwind those hips. So the, uh, the final one, I'll get two more for the lower body. Assisted deep squat, right? So uh, it's tough for a lot of people to get into a squat period. Nonetheless, ask someone to spend five to 10 minutes a day in a deep squat, which is what most experts will tell you is a required dosing to really improve squat mechanics, open up the ankles, knees, hips, even the lower back. So since most of us can't do it unassisted, let's just assist, so allow us to spend time in that position. And you can do this off of chair, couch, uh, the hands are just great to allow you to kind of spend time down in there. And we just spend time getting into a nice, good deep squat position, all right? And what different shapes can I take? I can play around with my feet closer together to get more ankle mobility or more full flexion of the hip. I can go wider to work on getting a little more adductor or groin. I can even get myself into a modified pistol or single leg squat shape and work on that. And again, not just very rarely are we just kind of staying in one position. You want to add movement and these oscillations to help actually improve the mobility further. If you And Kelly actually uses this a lot, that credit card analogy. You want to break a credit card or a paper clip, you don't just try to snap it. You actually kind of oscillate it until it actually breaks and then you can kind of uh, take it out. Does that make sense, Paige? Perfect sense. Okay, but Paige is like, I think Paige is pumped because she thought this was a Netflix and chill session. This is a Netflix and stretch session. So I think I've I baited and switched. So the assisted deep squat, great way to spend some time in there. Uh, ankle mobility, right? And this is like for me, uh, and, and why mobility is so personal to me. So I was a football player in high school and college. Uh, by the time I was 22, I had four knee surgeries under my belt, two on each knee. The doctors told me my cartilage damage was similar to what would be a 75 or 80 year old and that I would be done with really intense training. I'm now a decade later performing at the all time best. I've got no pain, knock on wood, I feel good. I'm doing things I've never done before at the age of 33 um, from my, that I could never even think about doing in my teens and 20s. And I really credit it to uh, learning more about my body, right? But also the mobility side of things. And uh, one of the big reasons I had knee pain was just brutal ankle mobility. A lot of us have sprained our ankles and we never really rehabilitate them, we tape them up. And as a result, we lose, we lose dorsiflexion in particular, which is the ability to pull the toe back to the shin, which makes it so every time we're running, jumping, a lot of landing forces and just impact forces come through that knee. So what you do is you can take a, a, a small board, a couple of weight plates, phone book or encyclopedia or a big book at home, anything elevate the toes slightly, and we'll spend two to five minutes working on, while keeping that back, that heel down, just working on driving the knee past the toe. And most of the effort should be focused more outwards. You can do some inward stuff. You don't want that arc of that foot to collapse, but just working on moving in and out, I can add some side to side motion and just mobilizing and opening that up and allow again, it's gonna take pressure off the knees. You'll run and jump better. You can get into deeper squats without having poor back positions, all right? So two to five minutes there. Whose wrists? hurt when they do push-ups. Comment in the thing, this is like a very common thing. A lot of females will deal with this, but even guys, and uh, if you think about it all day, we're spent fully flexed and wound up. These muscle fibers get super tight and we lose extension at the wrist, right? So let's work on extension at the wrist. And if you're in this position all day and we're not doing some stuff to offset that, your wrists are gonna feel like crap when you do push-ups. So all we'll do, you wanna focus on getting your fingers pointed towards your body keeping, imagining that this like, treat your hand like a foot. So this is the heel of your hand. Keep that heel down. And all we'll do is just spend time moving in and out, side to side. Two to five minutes, I'm watching my show. This might be a tough stretch, but I'm getting distraction. I'm entertaining myself while improving my performance and mobility. You find one side is tired than the other, block that down and just work on that side. And again, adding motion. Find all those tight corners, really no right or wrong way to do this, as long as you're feeling the benefit, you're keeping good mechanics in mind. 
So wrist mobility, that's amazing. We talked about this last week during our pull-ups tutorial. The elevated prayer stretch, most guys need to work on getting more flexion at the shoulder, all right, so they can do pull-ups, overhead squats, snatches, overhead presses, all the overhead stuff better without putting their back in a bad position. So elevated prayer stretch is my favorite way to do it. We'll elevate off, again, couch chair ottoman, get the uh, arms as straight as you can, crunch the abs, and let the head drop and sink between the arms. Deep inhales and exhales through the belly. I can add side to side motion, work on one side at a time. Great for opening up the lats, improving shoulder mobility. This one is a must for, for the average guy. Uh, final couple poses here uh, for Netflix and stretch drills. Uh, nine, lying Morpheus pose. So uh, we talked about improving rotation of the shoulder. Internal rotation is one of the things we're missing a lot. And you'll, you'll notice that if you come to a bottom of a push-up or bench press and you feel like I can't get all the way down, I start to feel pain in the shoulder. Internal rotation is probably a big part of that, not having enough of it. So what I mean by Morpheus, remember the Matrix? Morpheus used to stand like this for no particular reason at all times. So I want you to kind of get like this and create that position on the ground. And what we're trying to do is let gravity, uh, a lot of times because of our hunched over occupations or just poor posture in general, we get that kind of dumped forward rounded shoulder kind of the hunchback position. So what I want to focus on doing is letting the shoulders sink back into the capsules, all right? Staying tight there. I'm gonna feel a nice big stretch in the chest, the front shoulder. <sighs> Deep inhales and exhales. Again, I can look at the TV on the side. You find a way to watch the screen, okay? You make it work. You might look ridiculous, but again, I'm telling you, this stuff helps a lot. If you're gonna ask someone to do like a bunch of extra stretch in addition to their workout program, it's too much of an ask. So we have to find ways to have you multitask to get better. And uh, I can add some side to side movement and just play around with that and just get two to five minutes sinking into that to kind of go on that line Morpheus pose. If you have access to a waiter kettlebell at home, uh, kettlebell is something you can quickly just have to the side uh, for the traps and just the whole neck area. Same kind of thing, arms behind the body, just like this. And this is like, uh, I, I get very tight in the traps. We all, we all have a lot of stress up here. We struggle a lot. So just letting the weight pull you down into position and then adding some nice gentle movement of the head, laterally rotating this for two to five minutes will make your traps feel amazing. Really unwind your whole body. And again, I can do this while watching TV at home. And again, you know, small investment, just a light kettlebell can be uh, very useful for that. Final drill, if you don't have a resistance band, you can use a towel, rope, or cord. And all we're going to do here is just help open up that chest because you know what? You bench press a lot. You do a lot of push-ups. we got to open that up. So again, we always want to make sure we're not moving where? We don't want to move with the lower back, okay? So braced abdomen, tight glutes. The wider you grip, the easier it is. The closer the hands get, the, the more intense the stretch. I apologize for the pit stains. That's just, that's my life, okay? The moment I put the shirt on within two minutes, it's soaked. Let me know too if you've got some sweat issues. So all I'm gonna do is just start here and then I can add some motion at the upper back. Again, really grounding myself, keeping the core on, glutes tight. If that's too easy of a stretch, I just get my hands closer. And this is a great drill, again, watching TV to open things up. So please do us a favor. If you enjoyed this, you found some benefit, like and share. Let us know which stretches you like the most. Also, movies, TV series, let me know. I'm looking for always some new stuff to watch. And please don't miss this Friday at noon Eastern, uh, the live mobility workout. It's not going to be as sweaty as our normal workouts because again, mobility isn't going to get you as fired up. You might get a little glisten, okay? Maybe a little bit of pit stain action, okay? You can change shirts. So you can join us noon Eastern this Friday with Dr. Kelly Surrett. Check out his book, Becoming a Supple Leopard. We'll talk more about it on Friday. And if you can't make it live, it'll replay instantly the moment we're done with it. And uh, have a beautiful day in Netflix and Stretch. We'll see you next time.